What's going on, traders? It's your boy Capital L, and we are back from an action packed week of trading. It's just been a, a very, very good week, and it feels good to be a feel good. First, it feels good to be alive. Second, it feels good to be a trader. Wow, you know, this is just a great skill, and um, I just think back on it and just feel so grateful because it's been a long journey coming to actually uh, get here, and sometimes I just got to sit back and reflect. And um, it brings it's, it's great pleasure to actually be here and be able to, you know, uh, talk to you guys about this in this manner. Hopefully it helps some guys, you know, coming up, some newbies, people, and even some experienced folks sharpen up their skills a little bit when it comes to trading. So with that being said, if you find this video helpful, please hit the like button. Uh, if you got any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me a message at uh, unitedtradersrg at gmail.com. The RG is for research group because we're still growing. Nobody's perfect. And uh, any professional that they craft continues to uh, grow. Michael Jordan had a mentor. Tiger Woods got a mentor. You know, um, Tony Robbins and all the great people uh, and motivational speakers such as Les Brown speak about, you know, continuing to push yourself to get better at your craft. And, um, you know, that's why we're a research group because we're continuing to grow. And, um, you know, if you want to join or if you're looking for more information or if anything of this is helpful, if you got any questions, just feel free to shoot me an email. That being said, let's get to it. Weekly movers, weekly movers, weekly movers. Uh, if you've seen the midweek review, we were actually talking about uh, how the sentiment changed. And uh, we got some, some news out on the pound, some news out on the dollar. It was just an action-packed week. And actually, uh, I want to I uh, skip back a bit. Let me just take you back to what we was looking at during our midweek. So from our midweek, we had some negative news on the CAD, which uh, caused me to, uh, here we go. We had some news that came out on the CAD. Uh, GDP numbers would had me change my sentiment on the CAD. This actually wasn't the greatest call on the CAD, to be honest, which you, um, technically it was a uh, strong but fundamentally, it's not really looking that great. So um, we really just had one side of the coin. And, um, you know, it, sometimes it's like that. You know, sometimes it's like that. So took a took a little bit of a loss on that, on that trade right there when the news came out. Uh, but it was definitely against a weak pair. And, um, you know, just one of those lessons that we learned from. This was actually when the sentiment came out, what it, it looked like. So, um... I wanted to take a screenshot because this is where I could have got out at. A very small loss. Could have cut my losses dramatically. But um, I decided to hold on uh, and just let the, the risk-roll ratios play out and uh, actually end up taking a full loss and um, try to do some other things with the position. But um, that's, that's a whole other story. But getting back into, into, into the week, then uh, some news came out on uh, Dollar and... Uh, the the CAD, you know, the CAD news. Actually, excuse me, news came out on the um, Australian dollar retail sales numbers. And uh, that caused uh, my position on Australian CAD uh, to, to move back into our favor. And um, I actually exited that position. But uh, it was just it was just a, a, real, a real wild week. Then we had the midweek review when the news came out, the retail sales numbers, as I mentioned. Uh... We had some a change in our uh, pairs that we wanted to focus on. You can check that video out for that. I'm actually not going to get into it, but this is Thursday. So here we are again Thursday, that same Australian cat position that I had from the previous week. When the news came out uh, positive for uh, Australian building approvals, I seen that, the, that I knew that price was going to continue to move back against me. So I decided to exit right there. This is Thursday. 9.45 p.m. This is Eastern Time. Uh, and as you can see, you know, we just exited with a little bit of profit there. Price actually did end up coming all the way back. Um, we're going to see that a little bit later on. And then we also we had our Australian dollar position, which is actually the best pair moving into this following week. And we're going to get into that. Um, you definitely want to look for, for opportunities on the Australian dollar as we move on into this next week here. But I just wanted to review what we had uh, 
So this is beginning of the week. Uh, this is a uh, Monday, Sunday actually. Between these lines, this is Monday. So um, we we have we're still in a position from before. Oh, excuse me. I was still in a position before. I just want to say that right off the bat too. This is not uh, any trading recommendations. I just simply want to show you the best pairs to focus on, so you could uh, use your trading strategy to trade in that direction and hopefully uh, increase your overall bottom line by focusing on the best weekly movers moving into. Uh, the next week i should have said that in the beginning but uh you know i just kind of got carried away just want to give you guys a quick update you know and where we at and we're gonna get right into it but uh yeah this this is a trade that that we're looking at australian dollar short we got in ended up getting a nice three to one on that one and then uh later on in the week uh this is a uh, monday tuesday wednesday thursday thursday we got that uh pullback that we were looking for got into the position and then exiting on on Friday for a nice uh, two to one. Uh, also, later in the week, uh, got in on a on a trade on a pound Australian dollar. As you know, the midweek review. Uh, this is a, a potential uh, uh, currency pair that we were looking to uh, look for a po uh, position on. I was actually looking for it. Uh, you can see how we uh, talked about it in the video. We were looking for a pullback, and we got the pullback. So we got a great pullback, and uh, now we're looking to take it to the to the upside. Still, overall positive overview. I mean, outlook on the uh, pound, but uh, you know, uh, our next week is looking kind of interesting. And with that being said, let's get right into it. So moving into this next week, October six through uh, October tenth, my main pair. That I want you guys to focus on and I'm recommending is the Australian dollar. We got a weak sentiment on Australian dollar. Positive, positive, positive sentiment on the dollar. Dollar's been gaining a lot of strength lately. You want to look to trade your strategy, you know, in a in a short position on the pound on the Australian dollar. Um that's actually my um A1 position right there, my A1 currency that I'm looking at. With secondary currencies, if you want to look for more positions on the dollar yen and euro dollar those are like a secondary currency so if i could give it an order it'd be a for uh australian dollar b for us dollar yen euro dollar and uh the rest would be c uh which is pairs that include the pound as you can see um, if you don't know the way we pair these uh, pairs up we want to look for the best strongest pair technically and the weakest pair technically and uh, to compare and compare that with our fundamental outlook, this is how we uh, narrow down these pairs. And uh, I just kind of save you guys all the work and uh, just pull out the pairs for you, so you so you know where to where to where to where to look. And uh, hopefully, you can f uh, find some uh, some benefit in uh, focusing on these pairs as I do, as you can see. So um, with that being said, let's get back to it. Australian dollar. So uh, moving on into the week, into the news, to see what we're looking at. I just highlighted some some of the uh, reports that stand out a little bit. We got a weak sentiment on yen, still, and a strong sentiment on the dollar. Uh, the the weakest sentiment for me personally is on the Australian dollar, and the uh, strongest uh, sentiment is on the dollar. So, with that, moving into to the next week, uh, looking at Monday, we got some news coming out on Australian dollar, the cash rate. Uh, it's it's going to be uh, pretty interesting to see exactly what that number is. Uh, being that I got a negative outlook, uh, sentiment-wise, I think it's just a negative outlook on it. But uh, it's going to see how it's going to be interesting to see how price action uh, responds to that. Uh, we also may see some 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 movement on the New Zealand dollar. New Zealand dollar is also another pair you can trade, but I don't like to trade the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar. They're pretty uh, well correlated, so I just uh, take one to kind of limit my exposure and risk. And uh, if I, you know, I recommend you guys do the same. So you know, you just pick one or the other. For me, I'm already, uh, as you've seen, long still on a pound Australian. So I'm um, pretty uh, satisfied with that. Being that we got some news coming out on Australian, and we're gonna see, uh, we're just gonna see how that works out. So moving on into the next week, next day, excuse me. We got a uh, news on the yen. Just want to keep an eye on these news, uh, the news 
on the yen. Um, if you had taken any uh, positions on the US dollar yen or the pound yen. Um, we're going to get to the price action a little bit later and uh, we can we can see exactly how, you know, what I mean by that. We got some news coming out on the pound manufacturing. Uh, it's actually projected to be negative or lower, forecasted to be lower. So we may see a pullback on the pound early in the week. And that's why these are my C pairs. Um, it's a positive outlook overall, but we may get some negative reports that may cause price action to pull back a bit. So um, that's that. The yen, news on the yen Tuesday night. FMOC mean that's um I'm really expecting that to push the propeller market more than uh more than some of the other reports, and uh, I'm expecting for it to be positive, positive on the yen. I mean, excuse me, positive on the dollar. So um that'll really propel any uh, shorts on the Australian dollar to the downside. <clears throat> Continuing on, we got uh interest rates coming out on in, in the UK as well. It's gonna be interesting to see what those come up. You know, it's, it's 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 leaning more towards the positive side in my opinion, but uh, we just want to see with uh with this uh, little negative sentiment, it could be interesting. Then we got news. Uh, this is Thursday. Then we got news coming out on a dollar again. It's uh this is this is gonna be another interesting one because it's looking like it's rising, which is negative for the currency, but um I'm thinking it's a positive outlook. So this this could be a shocking number. And if it is, uh, if we, if you are in any positions, that can continue to, if it comes out positive, that can continue to propel your uh, Australian dollar short positions to the downside. Uh, moving on, uh, we got the yen, some po looking like some forecasts, some positive numbers. So that's why I'm uh, telling you guys, uh, anybody that takes a trade on a dollar yen or pound yen, you want to be uh, wary of a pullback this week. And then uh, we got... Uh, pound coming out with trade balance on Friday and uh, you know we just we just gonna see how that works out we just gonna see how that works out some 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 of them we just gotta sit wait and see but uh, we would just want to get an overall general uh, uh, idea what's what's what and these are definitely the times that you would like to be at your computer uh, my Forex factory is a setup for Eastern Standard Time so if you're in another country uh, please uh, correlate your uh, Forex Factory times. Um, you could definitely find that out on the site. <clears throat> or, um, you know, if, uh, you get a, give, if, I, if you give me enough requests, I'll, I'll make a video on this, no problem. But, um, yeah, definitely want to be around d during those times <clears throat> for, for these reports. And that's pretty much what we're looking at fundamentally. Um, I want to pull over the, to the charts so we can actually see what's going on. Checking out our Australian dollar here. So, this is what we're talking about. Uh, a couple positions that we that we took recently. Um, for me personally, this is a four-hour chart. Um, when the cash rate comes out, depending on how price responds, say it's, say it's uh, positive some some way somehow, it's, it should be negative. But say uh, there's some positive price action coming out of it, I like to see price pull back to this zone we could uh possibly get a uh some some sh short for some you know a pullback for price action to continue to the downside i target this zone again or uh, even further or we can actually see price pull down to the downside depending on how how it goes and that's this is really what i'm, I'm expecting um price could uh break down to the downside then if that if that's the case I want to wait for a pullback back into this zone and uh, targeting, targeting down there. We actually can see all of that this week, you know, um, as we go back to our, uh, excuse me one second. As we go back to our, calendar here we can see we got news coming out on Monday we got dollar news coming out on Tuesday dollar news coming out on Wednesday 
unemployment coming out it's projected low so in the beginning of the week we can see depending on how it responds to the cash rate that is when we will see we can see a sharp move to the upside and then as the positive dollar news comes out we can start to see a, a, a price action continue to the downside so we want to see I want to see how price responds to that cash rate number if it breaks down I'm, I'm waiting for a pullback to this side, to up here for another uh, short to the low side as I mentioned <clears throat> moving on to the euro the euro has just been uh, pretty good to us I'm still in actually some positions still in some positions actually um, to the short side um, this is a, a pair that I'm looking at because fundamentally it's just a, a weak outlook on the euro and the dollar is the strongest pair so as of right now so um, I'm definitely uh, seeing uh, or expecting some continued movement to the short side uh, with some possible movement uh, pull back to this zone 125.62 or 125.93 in this zone look for, looking for some reversal price action um, that's actually a level that I was looking at that it bounced off if you want uh, to uh, weekly, you can see price stalled, closed there, came back and pulled back there. So that was a zone that I was looking at. And I'm actually looking. My next target zone is this pink area down here. Actually, no, it's this it's a so weekly low down here to the blue area. And I'm 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 keeping a, a close eye on uh, exactly how. Excuse me exactly how that how how price action is working out it shouldn't do nothing unnatural it should uh pull back up here where i may be possibly looking for to add a long i mean a short position with that uh, dollar news that's coming out if it if it pulls all the way back up there it's 45 pips and then continue to target down to the downside i actually caught this one on the uh on the 15 show you the entry let me get into this lesson a little bit later but uh we're gonna get back to it this is where i caught it at um moving on to the usd yen still got a positive outlook on the dollar yen um on the dollar and the yen is still uh my most the second weakest pair to me in my opinion so uh even though we're into this zone right here, we're actually look we're actually like this is a strong resistance zone to me. Uh, if I move out to the daily to the weekly and we can see you see this is a previous uh, zone right here. So um fundamentally price should uh continue to plow through with our sentiment, excuse me. Moving back down to the four hour. Price should uh, continue to plow through and uh, possibly retrace back down. Retrace back down off of these. So if we get a break to the high and then uh, a test of these, test of this level, so we can get a break to the high. We'll continue moving to the upside. I really like that with our uh, targets up here in this zone, which is another uh, weekly zone. Our next weekly zone up here. If I'm going too fast for you guys, just uh, give me some feedback. Let me know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, I'm not doing. I'm not going too fast for you. But um, here we go. You know, just another zone. This is where we at right now. This is where we're targeting. This is where we're at right here, and uh, we're just seeing price action now. Fun, you know, um, let me get back down to the four hour. Now, as we look back at our calendar on the yen, I told you to keep an eye on this because we got news coming out on, on Monday, 
on the yen. Uh, another some more some more news on on Tuesday. Current account on Tuesday evening, which is projected positive. Uh, Wednesday, we got negative news. So early in the week, we could continue to see price action pull back down here, and then uh, on Wednesday, you know, it, it could actually it could actually come back down to these lows again, and then. Uh, can actually come back down to these lows but uh you wanna i still got a positive outlook on this um i'm in a trade actually as you can see so uh, i'm in a trade here for a two to one target we're gonna see i'm actually expecting price to stall maybe pull back a little bit more before on wednesday actually taking off because we can see on wednesday we got like a some news coming out on the yen that's a got like a negative outlook on the yen you know not, we don't really know what the numbers gonna be but right now it's not really looking good I'm expecting some positive news on the dollar so on Wednesday this pair should really move we should be able to make some better judgments uh, continuing on down to throughout the week we see this um, uh, a positive outlook on this news on Thursday so um, as we go back to our charts you know we can see like a nice breakout on, on Wednesday and then possibly you know, some some more pull, a, a more pullback. Excuse me. So we see a breakout, a pullback, and then you know, possibly next week we could see price continue to move up. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> but uh, I'm looking. I'm definitely looking for. You know, I'm definitely going to continue to hold this. And if you're looking for any longs uh, with your strategy, I still think it's a good idea. Moving on to our next potential pair is the pound Australian dollar. So as with the news coming out on the Australian dollar, we see that uh, we got the cash rate coming out. Uh, I'm in a position here, so I'm just going to continue to hold it. But I think uh, also if your strategy was to uh, produce a, a entry in this zone still, 1.8345 or one point. Uh, 82 86 area in this zone you know it'd still be a good trade to take to the to the to the long side as you know fundamentally the australian dollar as as we reviewed the australian dollar got some news coming out on it out on it but i'm expecting it's mostly negative sentiment so we can see a pullback a little bit early monday tuesday and then wednesday you know later in the week start to see uh price really start to move up into this area where i'll be will be targeting if I was you guys uh one point eighty five ninety eight. So um definitely expect price to stall. Um hopefully price continues to break out but uh you know we'll we'll have to sit and see exactly what price action does. But that's that's a good zone to be targeting and a good zone to be entering down here for you guys. Uh, so yeah with that being said that is that for the review which is great you know um, you can see my positions pretty much been working out um, and it's been a long time getting to this level so hopefully you find these you find these videos helpful um, before we get out of here I want to actually show you a different element of my trading which is a room for improvement so looking back on last week, I, I noticed that, um, you know, I was getting to that cap position, and some of the things I was running through my mind was uh, I got too many trades on, too many trades on. So um, I want to cut back on work on cutting back to uh, taking fewer trades. I said two right there, but I really mean fewer trades. Um, so moving forward into this week, the Australian dollar is really the pair that I'm going to be focused on. Um, I'm already I'm already in a few other positions, but uh, if I if I get any potential on the Australian dollar, that's that's really what I'm looking on. And I'm, I I mentioned that to say to you guys that uh you know just be careful of over trading. Watch the correlation if you if if if. Uh, It could, it could really hurt you sometimes if 
your in trades short Australian dollar short New Zealand dollar and then you know some uh, negative news on a dollar comes out you know or a surprise negative number and then you take a double loss instead of a single loss so you want to just be aware of that and be careful of that that happens a lot but if you limit your trading you can still uh, continue to push your equity curve in the right direction so you know sometimes I got to remind myself and um, that's exactly what this is about just room for improvement I want to cut back on the amount of trades and that's 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 from really just focusing on the top pairs which is really easy and as you can see um, the Australian dollar has been up there for the past couple weeks on our radar and um, it's been a couple wins you know um, I took that loss on the CAD yen that's minus one I took uh, a loss on the dollar yen as well that's uh, two um, but uh, you can see from the Australian dollar trade I got plus three on the Australian dollar trade um, first one and uh, plus two on the other uh, Australian dollar trade so that's plus five right there which is you know got me in positive territory and now we're in some trades right now so um, you could definitely limit your trading to the to the top pairs and uh, increase your equity curve even greater you know so um that's why I'm looking back and just uh, taking 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 note of that my next one is exit exit and trade exit and target strategy uh, my solution you know my the reason why I say that was because when that report came out let's actually flip back When this report came out, this is what I was considering here, closing half and uh, re-putting my position up there, you know, and I see that I could have decreased my loss in this in this uh, situation. When I actually see how price action actually carried out, let's actually go on now and check it out. We can see that this is, you know, um, I believe it was right here where we were talking about. Let's uh, take another look. Yeah, so I believe this is the same candle. Right here in this zone. But it was definitely in this zone. You know, I believe, yeah, it was definitely in this zone. I believe this was the candle, but later on when it closed, it closed down there. But when I was contemplating it, it was up here. And I could have decreased my loss, you know, pretty pretty tiny as you can see you know this would have been my loss right there just that little zone but by the time this candle closed it was down there and that's when the sentiment and everything from uh you know traders seeing that and different things started to really set in on the cat and um this is what i'm talking about is uh this is where i got room for improvement is the exit you know, knowing when to exit. And uh, hopefully you guys could find that same, a lesson in that as well. Because I definitely found a lesson in that. Because I know better. You know, it's always trial and error with, with our trading. We're always like, you know, we just got to reiterate these things. But I know better. You know, so um, moving forward, I definitely want to, uh, I'm definitely working to have a, a exit strategy in, in place which I pretty much do pretty much do but I, I really feel like I could solidify that a little bit more you know and uh, looking at our uh, next our uh, next uh, so yeah so for the exit and target strategy uh, review exit strategy and potential add-on rules exit um and target or, or negative or negative sentiment so that's that's really what it was so when I got the negative sentiment on the cat that's what I'm talking about in addition during the week um, I had uh, some problems entering trades on my platform you know um, you know I, I, I got multiple accounts but on that particular platform that I'm using right there to show you guys like I was having some issues entering trades it was saying that the market was closed when it was open that's this is when the news came out and um 
it's just, you know, that's not really what you want to deal with, you know, after you do all your analysis and everything. You don't want that on your mind. So I just wanted to note that and uh, just think of some potential uh, options. If you guys got any options, any anything uh, in mind, I'm, I'm open. Please share, comment below. Um, if you guys had the same issue, please comment on, you know, because right now I'm exploring my options. Of course, I got other broker accounts, but, um, you know, it's just an issue that it, it could happen with other brokers as well. So, you know, I'm, I, this is not something I really want to deal with. And um, I don't want you guys to have to deal with that either. You know, um, with that being said, you know, it was just something else, uh, another area where I've seen room for improvement. You know, so just to, and I'm exploring my options right now with that. So, so you guys' input is definitely welcome. So for this week, I wanted to give myself a, a, a trade score, and I gave it a, a seven. Typically because, of, you know, I could have saved a, on that CAD yen trade. I could have, you know, decreased my loss. I knew better, and I didn't. But now I got a plan on improving that. Um, also, also with the too many trades, you know, I know better than that. So moving forward, you definitely look into uh, improve and uh, continue to work. And, you know, we could actually share our experiences on how we learn through these trial and error lessons you know these are just kind of like practical lessons that you really can't learn from a, a, a you know that you really can't learn from from a book you know this is experiential lessons so I know you guys know what I'm talking about and those those are the ones that you got to jot down and really uh keep in your journal and be aware of because they will creep back in and that's what's going on here but um it's just great for me to share share them with y'all and uh, hopefully you guys learn and uh, can take note as well. If you guys got any questions, as you know, with the reach, United Traders Research Group at gmail.com. And just getting into the next one, I want to, you know, just answer a question to, for a lot of new V traders out there. Because it was a long journey. It's been about five years, six years. And um, it wasn't until this year that I actually got profitable and I'm consistently profitable. So, um, a lot of newbies I would like to help accelerate you know your learning curve um, and this is how I'm paying it for it I love trading I think it's the greatest skill in the world uh, you know cuz uh, there's no telling when when when, a, when your supervisor or someone could lay you off from your job but if you know the skill of trading you always got something that could produce income I think it's just the greatest skill you can do it from anywhere in the world um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to have to continue to get into it, but I, I love it, and uh, this is why I want to help newbies as well, because uh, I know for me, it was just like trial and error from day one, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, and um, it's tough sometimes. That could get you into a few uh, unproductive zones, and one for me personally that, that comes to mind right now is uh, system hopping. I was system hopping for a while. For a while, I was in like that twilight zone on the forums. Just trying every new system, but I, little to know, for me to know, I wasn't even giving it enough time. The second that I got a few losing trades, this doesn't work. I guess I was looking for a holy grail. And I think everyone goes in, goes through that. Um, but, uh, you know, it wasn't until I really took trading serious, very, very serious, extremely serious, that um, things really started to open up to me. And, that, and this is why, you know, I'm here, and this is why I want to, I want to help you guys. So this was one of the biggest questions that I, that, that, that I came across this week was um, issues pulling the trigger. How to trade like a pro. And to me, what that said is like, um, if we're looking at price action, it's actually just, uh, if we're looking at price action, wow, this year I moved this week. If we're looking at price action, and we're saying, oh, we want to go short here. You know, it's some anxiety because it's like real money on the line. It's a possibility of us losing. Um, you know, it, and, and society, I, I don't really think they actually prepares us for that, to accept the loss. We, um, you know, everyone is striving to be an A student, a winner. You know, but in this profession, it's okay to lose. Actually, losing is part of it. You know what I'm saying? You're actually a good trader by 
you know, um, managing your losses. That actually, but but losing is pretty much inevitable in trading, and that's kind of in a different direction from um, where I feel like a uh, society is actually, you know, instills in us. So it's a different, actually, a different skill and a different kind of uh, psych psychology that you got to apply to this. And um, for me personally, to get beyond, to get beyond the uh, the anxiety of pulling the trigger. I see my candle setting up. I see, I see everything. Everything is pointing in the right direction. But actually pulling the trigger. And then before I know it, the trade is over here and uh, I done missed the, the initial move. And then next thing, you know, it's, 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 it's a rough cycle. But for me, let me tell you what worked for me. For, what worked for me was actually uh, placing uh, stop orders. So um, this is what I'm recommending for you guys that have issues of pulling the trigger. Uh, let's uh, take a look on the four hour. Trying to just see the price action. All right, it's really just uh, placing the stop order, and uh, we can use this for for example. Oh, let's let's see what we got on the cat. Okay, let's let's just use the cat. So say uh, we want to get short right here. Say, uh, you know, prices, here we go. Prices is, is moving into our, our zone. If we had a short outlook on this, on this CAD right here. On this particular currency. Price is moving into our zone. When do we sell? When do we sell? And if you got issues we're figuring out how to, you know, when to pull a trigger, because it could, it could definitely just continue to push up to the upside. Um, but when price action is like this, when do we sell? If you have an issue pulling the trigger, I recommend actually placing a stop order below the lowest low. So you guys should know about f fractals and different. Uh, I'm actually gonna put some. Uh, indicator to help you guys if you don't know about fractals um if you go to indicators bill williams fractals i like the gold ones oh, yellow. let's see how yellow one. Uh, okay so go and get you a fractals indicator and what you want to do is uh, place stop orders so i'm actually gonna uh, You know what? I apologize, folks. I apologize. I got too much on the chart right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clear my chart real quick and uh, make it. There we go. That should be better. Just those lines. Is, uh, I like to keep my notes like that on a chart, you know. But uh, it was just these lines that I think will maybe confuse the folks a little bit. Just get rid of that. Okay. Just trying to be a little bit sensitive. Hopefully... Hopefully you guys are still you know still with me. Uh, if not, just uh, feel free to ask me any questions, anything. But um, yeah, you don't even mind that. That's just uh, whatever. That's what's going on now. But uh, over here, back into the price action lesson and uh, helping with pulling the trigger. You want to wait till you get uh, if you're in this area here, just place a stop order below uh, the lowest low. And the way you could do that, you could right click. Press uh, select your lot size. Now, um, another lesson is uh, selecting the proper lot size. Um, you know, this is actually the, the the way that you do it if you if you know your lot size. But um, I actually got a tool that I use that makes it uh, extremely easy. Um, I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But uh, at the very minimum, this is what you want to do. You just want to right click there. Let me just do it all over. Right click, sell stop. Play. Market's closed, so I can't do it. 
But um, you want to place a sell stop order there. And uh, just allow the market to prove itself to you. If the market, uh, if the market breaks down, it's making a low, low. Allow price action to get you into the tree and just let it go. Let it go. Um, what I actually recommend is uh, two to one targets. So long as you uh, it's actually. This is the tool that I use to enter trades. And it helps me keep just a visual of, you see how it says there, this is 1.6 to one. Um, it helps me make, keep my risk reward ratios. Let me give you, let me just show you an example of this actually from last week's trading. It actually helped us with our Euro. I mean, I use it on all my trades. But um, you can still see here on a uh, 15 minute. So uh, I got my, my Campbell's entry indicator here. And uh, what I did is right below the candle, I just placed my lines for my uh, Campbell's entry indicator. So I got my signal. That's what price action is. So yeah, it comes around where price action is, but um, so you don't have to look for it like this. But uh, in this demonstration, you would just move the lines: yellow line for your entry, blue line for your target, red line for your stop loss. And what I did, this is what I'm doing. I'm giving you a demonstration of what I did. So at the time, price action was right there, so the line just popped up over here. Um, I just moved them to when I seen that candle close right below the low of the candle right above these highs it's in my zone and my target was uh, this weekly, le weekly level down here which makes this trade 22.5 to 1 which is it's not a normal risk reward ratio that you get like even over here I got this trade at a uh, eight to one, but as you can see, price action is moving. It's continuing to move. Let's actually zoom out to another direction. I mean, time frame. Price action is is moving in our direction. So this is the entry up here. This is the uh, second entry over here. Um, price is uh, moving in our direction, and fundamentally. There's nothing to stop it. So as you can see from our outlook, so I'm just continuing to hold this on down. Again, these are not trade recommendations. I'm just actually trying to show you guys price action. And um, what I do, what I would do to uh, prevent or to help with uh, the the issue of pulling the trigger. And uh, that's that's simply that. Just uh, place your you stop orders for breakout entries. So you could uh, use a breakout of a candle. Maybe you got a candle confirmation. Just right below the low, that candle. Just place your stop order right there. Order below the fractal. Use the fractal indicator like I showed you. And just allow price to get you into the trade. And that will help with the anxiety of uh, pulling the trigger. And uh, if you haven't seen my two to one video yet, power of uh, two to one in trading, um, if you set your trades two to one and uh, use these kind of entries, these breakout entries, whether it's a candle or if you set your trades two to one at these levels, um, you should see a, a dramatic difference in your results if you haven't been already, if you haven't been using two to one risk reward ratios. Um, and also, I invite you to. Uh, Check out my tool, um, my Campbell's Entry tool. Um, if you want more information about that, just uh, reach out at United Traders Research Group, United Traders RG, RG for Research Group at gmail.com. They'll definitely help you with that because that'll help you with your position sizing. Like when I enter my trades, 
Um, I don't enter any position sizing. You know, I don't think about any position sizing or anything. I just move those lines just like I showed you. And you can see that actually in the Easy Order video um, that I did also here on my YouTube uh, YouTube page. You can check that out. Where's well, the demonstration of it actually entering position and stuff like that. So with that being said, with that being said, sorry about that. With that being said, let's get back to it to the to the question. Issues with pulling the trigger. So hopefully, you know, just uh, using the stop orders would help you. Uh, would be a good remedy to uh, that anxiety with pulling the trigger and just allowing the two to one risk reward ratios to play out. I know sometimes we get excited when we see a little bit of profit, you know. Um, and we want to pull it out, you know, pull out the uh, the trade. But I just allow it, a lot of these ratios to play out and, and just watch your results over the next 50 trades. You, you'll be you'll be uh, surprised if you haven't been using it already. So hopefully you find that uh, helpful. Definitely uh, invite you to check out that video I did on uh, the power of 2 to 1 risk reward ratios. And uh, the second end of this question is how to trade like a pro. And, uh, you know, for, for one, I wanted to question, like, what's a pro? For me personally, when I was uh, just starting this and everything, a pro was a uh, a consistent trader. Because with consistency, you could uh you could take trade into whatever limits you really imagine, in my opinion. But uh, first, you got to get to that level of consistency. And uh, in my opinion, that's exactly how traders, pro traders trade. Um, I know I'm trading. I'm trading consistently, and it's because I'm using the power two to one risk reward ratios. That tool. Which uh, you could ask me about at a United Traders Research Group, Campbell's Entry Tool. Um, I'm using my Outlook and I'm focusing on the on the on the top pairs, which I'm showing you guys. Um, you know that's working for me. And uh, if you if you've been struggling, I definitely invite you to take a look into it. Reach out to me for it. Do your own research on YouTube and into these topics about uh, risk reward and um, different things like that so um, do your own research and uh, just make a collective opinion on your own I can tell you from experience that it works and uh, it got me over the hump and I'm pretty excited you know because because you know after years of working to get to this level those, those was the real keys that helped me out so um, you know continue to uh, Trade your plan and work your plan and trade your plan. Uh, it's great to be a trader. You know, um, I love this life, man. I love this life. I get to share with you guys and um, hopefully increase your equity curve. So with that being said, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if there's anything you would like to see more, any suggestions on how I can improve this or things that you're curious about, Feel free, like I mentioned, to reach out unitedtradersrg at gmail dot com. Till next time, continue to focus on the uh, on the Australian dollars to the short side as the as our as our pair. Hopefully, that uh, uh continue to increase our equity curve. And uh, hopefully, you found this video helpful. Till next time, you know, take it easy. Happy trading.